Welcome back to the Every Tries YouTube channel. Today's class, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful mermaid hoop skirt, also called a petticoat. So, this is actually a requested tutorial from the ball petticoat dress that we made. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so we have various types of petticoats. Here is one. Sorry, I'm using a pen, a pencil. I couldn't find my marker. Okay, so this is one that comes from your waistline. Okay, so this is from the waistline. I can see that from the waistline, it just goes downwards like this. Okay, so we have this type already on the channel. So this is what you wear underneath your ball dresses okay so you just make it you can use your boning or whatever it is that you want to give it structure and then you wear it as an underskirt before you wear your ball dress on it but the one you're going to be working on today is the mermaid type okay so the mermaid skirt usually does not start okay the flare does not start from the from the waistline just like this one it starts from around the knee area which is what i measured okay so now from this waistline we are going to have our regular basic pencil skirt like we can see here we're going to have our basic skirt here and then from here we're going to have a flare from our knee length okay so it's like a division in case of this the flare just comes from the waistline and then goes downwards like this so this has like a two parts so the basic skirt is the first part and then the flare that we're going to be joining to this is the second part so now to get the measurements for this you need to measure from your waistline all the way to the floor that's where this skirt is going to stop in this case this total measurement is going to be 48 inches for me that's from the waistline to the floor so after that you need to get your measurement from your waistline again from where this pencil skirt is going to stop which is usually around two inches above the knee you don't want it to be exactly on your knee length because it may be a bit difficult for the person to walk in it and if it's above the knee it also gives some form of fitting so it fits better than when it's exactly on the knee length so now you just measure what you have on your knee length and you deduct two inches this is what i have here so for me that is 22 inches okay so which means that automatically if you want to get the length of your flare if you deduct this 22 inches from the 48 inches whatever it is that you have is going to be the length of your flare so now for this flare now the length is going to be 48 minus 22 and that is going to give me 26 inches so now we we'll move straight to cut this so the first part that i'm going to be working on is my basic pencil skirt and then i'm going to be working with a bridal satin to cut this out so the measurements you need because this is going to be like an underskirt it's not going to have a zipper so i'm not going to use my exact waist measurement i'm just going to increase it in fact you can also use your the same measurements you have on your hip for your waist so that by the time you wear it you can use your elastics to gather it back to your actual waist measurements or you use a rope to tie it back to your actual waist measurement so now the hip measurement i'm working with is 40 inches okay so i'm working with a hip of 40 inches so now the waist measurement ideally should be 30 inches but because i'm not going to have a zipper to this so i can't use my exact waist measurement you can use around 38 inches or you just use the 40 inches that you use for your hip and then the knee length as well is very important you don't want it too tight but at the same time i want it to have like a little bit of shape so you can see how this shape is coming okay so now from your knee length from the 40 inches you have here you can deduct like four inches because we don't want it to be too tight so deducting four inches will be around 36 inches and if you want if you want it really free you can also re re replicate what you have here but for this tutorial this is the measurements that i'm going to be working with so now i'm going to fold my fabric okay so my fabric is folded into four now and then i'm going to take my full length measurement first so the full length that i'm working with for the pencil skirt is 22 inches so we are going to be having like a casing on top to pass either our elastic or our rope so i'm going to put the allowance for the casing there so there i'm just going to add around one and a half inches to two inches extra to that and then i'm going to measure it 
so instead of measuring 22 inches exactly i'm measuring around 24 inches from the hem you can see and then i'm going to mark that into a straight line and then cut it off okay so now this is also going to double as my waistline my waist is 40 divided by 10 by 4 is 10 and then i'm going to hide one inch seam allowance to that okay on my hip line my hip line is eight inches remember i already had it two inches extra so you have to include that that's going to leave it at around 10 inches because you are still we are going to fold in that extra two inches so that your waist your hip measurement doesn't jump by the time you fold this thing so you have to take note of that so here i have my 10 inches here and then here again i'm going to measure my waist measurement and this is 10 inches so when i was measuring this waist the measurement was not taken too tightly so it was just a little bit free so that the person can wear it easily so here i said i'm going to be working with 36 inches for my my knee length my round knee so now that 36 inches i'm going to divide it by four and that's going to leave me with nine inches that's like one inch deduction on fold from my hip line and then i'm going to add my allowance to that as well and then i'm going to connect it so after connecting it i'm going to cut it out and then take it to the sewing machine and so because this does not have a zipper you can see that there is no zipper allowance i'm cutting the front and back exactly the same way so again there are several types of mermaid skirt this is just the regular one we are doing there are some that may have that may have like a tail like an extension at the center back okay you can also wear this type for the ball you can also decide to just make a separate one for that also if you want to see a tutorial on that as well you can let me know in the comment section and then you consider making a tutorial on it so now that we have this this is my front and this is my back i'll go ahead now and sew it by the one inch allowance that i left on both sides and then i'm going to fold in on the waistline so that i can create my casing so that is it for the upper part now we move to the flare part okay so for the flare to get your radius you need to work with your round knee measurement which is in this case remember we are going to be sewing it to the hem of the of the pencil skirt which is our round knee so you need your round knee measurement which in this case is 36 inches and then you also need the length of your flare which is round knee this is round knee and the length is 26 inches so these are the two important measurements you will need so for this i'm going to be working with a half circle flare and then the formula for getting the radius of half circle flare is your waist measurement divided by 3.142 okay so that is the measurement that i'm going to be working with so whatever i have here is going to be my radius for the flare and then the length is going to be the 26 inches that i measured so this 26 inches is in excess because by the time we form this structure it may tend to jump so i already had it to my floor measurement while i was measuring this because i don't want it to jump and be looking upward so my radius is going to be okay so the radius is around 11.4 5 or 11.5 there about so you can use this as it is if you don't want to gather on the knee area or i may decide to have some gathers so i can just leave it to be 12 or 13 inches so that i can have access to gather around my knee and then the length is going to be 26 inches so to fold my fabric like i said is a half circle flame i'm going to first fold the fabric into two i'm showing this with the paper because it's going to excuse me a little bit big okay so my fabric is folded into two parts and then after that i'm going to fold it in form of a cone like this in form of a triangle so after folding in form of a triangle from this sharp point i'm going to measure your radius which in this case is the 12 or 13 inches okay so from here now you measure your 13 inches and then from here from the radius you measure your length which in this case is 26 inches so from here now you start measuring 26 inches like this and then you cut it out so i'll go ahead and do this now and bring it back to show us what we have 
Okay, so I have gone ahead to cut this out now, as you can see. Sorry, it's white, so it may not be a bit to see it's very raw. But this is the waist, which is the radius, and this is the full length. So you can see that the full length is the 26 inches that I measured. Okay, so the next thing now is to decide how we want to add structure to this. And I cut it using my hard net, okay? You can also use your your bridal satin for this but i prefer to use my hard net the normal one we use for our regular ball dress okay so now depending on the type of structure that you want to have to this you can use you can use boning your plastic boning or regular boning to add structure to this you can use crinoline or you can also if you have excess net you can also pleat your excess net around this so depending on the fullness that you actually want for this some people don't even need to to add a bony to this especially if the net that you are working with for your actual fabric is a lot and the fabric already the dress already has a full net gathered to it so you may not need too much for it to become a really nice ball dress but if your net is not so full and you want something to enhance it then you can actually use a bonnet to this so i'm going to try to show us several ways we can add structure to this net okay so like i said you can use a bonnet okay i'm going to be using both boning and crinoline okay for this and then you can also get your excess net and then you gather it around it so i'm going to be taking us straight so this is the crinoline that i'm working with and it's about three inches okay so for, for the purpose of this tutorial i'm supposed to use like a contrasting color of crinoline but i don't have so i'm just going to use this black decorative crinoline okay you shouldn't use this because it's not so strong for this tutorial this is just for making decorative stitches and all of that so i'm going to use this but i'm just going to use this to show us how i'm about place it so that we can see it very well because they are contrasting colors so now depending on the amount of materials you have to work with you need to divide this length that you have into sections okay remember it's a total of 26 inches so you can measure and divide this by four or by three depending on what you want so i'm just going to measure around six six inches interval and then i'm going to just make a line around this but this is a net so you may not see my markings very well so from the radius here i'll measure six inches like this and then from here again i'm going to measure around another six inches okay so from here i'll measure another six inches which is so and then i'll have the last one so now i have like one two three and the final one remember i'm going to sew this to the waistline so i'll make sure to do this all round i'll make all this marking all round for all of this before i start placing my crinoline okay so i have made these markings and i hope you can see it it may be a bit faint because on the next ball this is the first one then i have six inches interval and then i have the second one and this is the third one okay so now this is how i'm going to be arranging the crinoline so on this line that i have here i'm just going to place my crinoline like this crinoline is very elastic so it's just going to bend and follow you so i'll place it like this and then i'm going to sew it all around following the lines that i have there okay so this is how i'm going to sew it on the next one as well where the line starts i'm going to place the crinoline and sew it round. so like i said after sewing it round to add a little bit of fullness i'm going to cut the xx net that i have here i'm going to cut it maybe about three inches or four inches long and then i'm going to gather it to the edge of the crinoline okay just for it to give me another type of fullness so after sewing my crinoline to this i'm going to gather xx net around this now and then it's just going to flow like that so i'll move to the next one i'll sew my crinoline to it and then i'll gather the excess net to the tip so like i said this is enough if you don't want it too full okay if you don't want it to be too full this is enough but if you want it to really have structure and you want it to be standing on its own by the time you finish you want it to form that round shape and stand on its own you're going to achieve that with the help of your crinoline of your bony sorry so what you're going to do after sewing your crinoline you can even use ordinary just your just your bony to achieve this so after sewing or in this case i'm going to be using crinoline as well so after sewing in my crinoline 
I'm going to create a casing on this upper part okay so i'll place the casing all around if you don't know how to create a casing you can watch the first petticoat uh, petticoat skirt that we made okay where you made the request of this in that video we did a detailed tutorial on how you can create boning for each of them and how you can insert the boning so you're going to create the boning on this upper part now and then you insert boning so i'll go ahead now and take this to the sewing machine and do all of this and bring it back to show us because i don't want this video to be too long okay so i have gone ahead to add this crinoline okay so i use the contrasting color of thread i hope you can see it so this is my crinoline this is the channel that i created for the boning and this is the extra net that i gathered so i don't have so much net but you can see how it's just poking outwards like this so this is also going to give it extra fullness so like i said the crinoline is going to strengthen this area where we are putting our bony channels and the and the gathers the net gathered around here giving it more fullness so if you don't want it to be standing or too full this will also work as well because you can see that even without adding boning i'm yet to add boning to this and it's already standing a bit okay but if you want it to have that structure of just looking like it's sitting on its own then that is where you will need these channels that we created so this is what we have now i can see what it's looking like i have three layers of gathers i have the first one the second one and the third one and i have crinoline in between all of them as well as my boning channel so for my skirt as well i've gone ahead to sew the skirt and on the upper part here i created my channel remember we left two inches so i just folded this and then left this small space to either pass my elastic or my rope so this is what i have for this skirt so on this upper part remember i added xx to it so i went ahead to run a gather stitch so that i can gather it back to my actual knee measurement and then i'll go ahead and sew this close because remember i did not have a center back seam here so i'll just close it up and then sew my skirt the upper part of my skirt to the flare okay so i'm going to sew it in a way that i can sew it in a way that the net is not going to hurt the person remember the net is a bit sharp so this is how i'm going to sew it so you can see how i have placed this so i'll place the net like half an inch away from the hem so that by the time i finish sewing it i can just flip this over like this or you can just go ahead and flip it like this as well and sew around so that by the time you you turn it like this the fabric is going to be showing on the other part not this very harshness that we have here I have gone ahead to join them together and you can see what we have so like i was explaining i don't want any friction around the knee so i made this part longer by half an inch so that this part is what is going to be on the skin so this is a salvage area so i'm just going to leave it like this but you can also fold it on top of the net and so or use your bias to clean it up whichever one you want to work with is fine so now the next thing to do now is to go ahead and fix my boning in the channels that i created here so i have my boning here so i'll just insert this boning now and then fix it all around so if you watch the tutorial on how to make a petticoat for a ball dress i'm sure this part is not going to be difficult so i'll go ahead and fix boning to all of them now and then i'm going to close this end and then take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like okay so i have inserted my bone so you can see i used a rope to gather the waist and this is what it looks like okay so i use the same measurements for my waist and my hip i just shaped the knee so that i can have this effect and you can see that i started the flare like two inches above the knee as we have seen and also if you can look closely you will notice that my bridal satin just drops down because i don't want the net to be hurting the person so you can see what it looks like now so this is what each of the layer looks like and you can see how it is standing on its own so like i said if you want it to just stand you can see how it is standing if you want it to just stand on its own like this what you just need to do is to work with your boning so if you're working with boning you may not have all of these gathers okay but if you are not adding boning to yours and you want to add gathers please make it longer than this i just did this because it's a tutorial so you can make your the length of the gathers as much as six seven to eight inches so that i can drop down and then you make sure your gather is fuller than this so you just measure around the space where you want to add the gather and then you can multiply that space by three 
or even four so that you can have something really full because you are not going to be adding a bony to it. But if you are adding bony, you don't need all of that. You just need to create the channels for your bony, make them as close together as possible. Remember, we worked with around six, six inches here, so it is very close which is why we have something this beautiful. You can see what this gave us. You just need to wear this underneath your garment and whatever it is, even if it's an Ankara flare, whatever flare dress that you're working with, it just brings out the fullness of the flare, even if you don't have too muchness or too much fabric going on there. I hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.